Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, the uses of econometrics or statistical modeling in finance. It's called financial econometrics. It's a separate academic field. It wasn't separate a couple of decades back, but it has now become a separate uh, academic field, which is known as financial econometrics, where people use econometrics techniques in the financial data. Uh, it is increasingly being used uh, in applied research as well in banks, in hedge funds, in uh, insurance companies, in quantitative you know, trading companies. So we'll talk about you know, what is it all about and how you can learn it, right? how you can make use of it. All right, so financial econometrics, as the name suggests, is about application of statistical modeling techniques in financial market data. Right. But it's not uh, right limited to only financial market data. There are also other applications, but loosely we can define it as, you know, application of uh, econometrics or statistical modeling in financial market data. Uh, unlike econometrics, uh, the, the normal econometrics, it focuses more on financial data, whereas econometrics as such focuses on uh, a number of other fields also, for example, in public finance in development economics in sociology, in uh, many other areas of economics, microeconomics and so on, right? Um, there are many areas of finance where financial econometrics is heavily used. Okay, some of these are risk management, quantitative trading, pricing of different financial products, and then portfolio management, uh, corporate finance, so, uh, you know, regulations and so on. So these are some of the areas where financial econometrics is uh, quite often used. Um, so what are the topics that come under financial econometrics? Uh, it's not limited to the list that you can see on the screen, but some of the most important ones used in uh, finance uh, are these. Okay, first one is optimal asset allocation. This is very important for the portfolio management. Um, so portfolio managers use financial econometrics to come up with optimal uh, asset allocation uh, and then value at risk uh, is very famous in risk management in the market risk where you see uh, how uh, risk i mean how uh, can you quantify risk based on movement in the market uh, prices of the different assets so that value at risk then capital asset pricing model so those who have studied corporate finance uh, you would know that it's a very famous model to price different assets so again, it's basically, uh, you know, pricing uh, financial asset. That's where um, we use financial econometrics as well. Arbitrage pricing model. So arbitrage is basically where, you know, you take advantage of the, the differences in two markets, right? There are uh, some price differences in two, uh, different markets and some traders basically, they take advantage of that difference and, and make money out of it. And that's basically uh, called arbitrage uh, arbitrage and the, the way you price different, you know, assets, financial assets, called arbitrage pricing uh, model. There also we use financial econometrics. And then you use financial econometrics in uh, uh, forecasting, forecasting different uh, financial data, be it uh, Forex, be it stock price, be it stock index. Uh, all these financial data, you can forecast using financial econometrics. You use financial time series basically for that. And then you can also uh, use it for volatility modeling. So volatility is about knowing the risk associated with a with a given uh, uh, with a given financial asset, right? Volatility is about uncertainty in the future, and uncertainty is basically important to assess the risk associated with a given asset. And then for pricing point of view, also it's very important because you do a risk based pricing where you have see you see higher uncertainty, that means higher volatility. Then you you would like to uh, have a uh, a higher price to that, right? Um, and then you also use financial equity in term structure of interest rate, or it's known as yield curve, right? Even if you're not from a finance background, you might have heard about yield curve, especially these days, right? During the Corona times, where you know we are going through a financial crisis, an economic crisis, the yield curve, right? You might have read in the newspaper that is now. Uh, downward sloping right so in yield curve analysis is basically where you see the future interest rate of different uh, you know uh, different asset but most importantly uh, sovereign bonds you know government bond whatever you call it 
uh, that's you know mostly reported in the newspapers but there are also other types of uh, yield curves where you see uh, yeah the future uh, interest rate um, right right and that varies with time by the way right um, you like to pay higher uh, interest rate uh, or the price would be less uh, for uh, for a longer time period it's basically a relationship with your time and uh, some sort of a price associated with that and then market efficiency right you might have heard about efficient market hypothesis so there are also researcher you know uh, trying to uh, do lots of analysis on uh, understanding the efficiency and the deficiency both are important right efficiency as well as deficiency in the market and financial econometrics is also used there and apart from that there are other, many other topics right uh, like anomaly detection in the price data uh, or in the market data uh, or analysis on uh, economic downturns a possibility of economic downturn forecasting those things they also these topics also come under financial economic uh, metrics uh, and this is uh, uh, yeah heavily used in in the financial world some of the popular modeling techniques and financial econometrics are this uh, again it's the list is not limited to these topics there are many more topics but some of the famous ones are like arima it's a time series modeling technique um, so that's also quite famous vector autoregression is famous um, markovs and monte carlo error correction model uh, arch gauge some regression techniques most of them are time series uh, modeling techniques time series is heavily used in financial research whether it's volatility modeling where you use arima sorry uh, arch and gauge so this is used for volatility modeling and then for uh, stock price prediction you can use arima and and things like that and then to find relationship you know between two uh, between you know uh, various financial uh, variables you use regression but with some sort of a precautions right because when you have a, a time series data um, doing regression uh, you have to be very uh, cautious because there are a lot of violations of assumptions of regression so these are some of the popular techniques used in uh, uh, in finance so these are some of the econometrics techniques but apart from that you also use uh, techniques such like copula right? copula is heavily used is some sort of a correlation that's also heavily used actually in the in the uh, financial research then extreme value theory is also used extreme value theory extreme value theory is very useful in operational uh, uh, operational risk research and regression techniques are heavily used in risk management in credit risk management uh, regression techniques are used so this this is the list but it's not limited by the way I'd like to inform you and then uh, some of the very popular uh, academic journals in financial econometrics are these. Again, this the list is not limited to only these journals, but these are the famous ones. Econometrics, Econometrica is the most famous journal on econometrics. It also uh, covers a lot of financial econometrics papers. Then you have Journal of Econometrics, Journal of Business and Econometr Economic Statistics. And then you have journal of financial econometrics so if you really want to study uh, financial econometrics papers right um, be it a theoretical paper or be it applied paper you can refer to these journals but nowadays you can also get uh, a lot of these papers on arc xiv so that's all free of uh, that's freely available there also you can find quite a number of good papers and then some of the real world applications well there are many applications actually you know people have been using financial economics for decades now so it's not uh, now that we're talking about uh, you know analytics or data science or ai being used in many different things also in banking finance trading investment but finance is one field which has been using data and analytics and you know statistical modeling for decades now uh, during the 60s and early 70s there were lot of work done on the portfolio theory and there people use uh, lots of uh, statistical modeling not just in academia but also in the um, in the real world and people started using mainframe computers in uh, different uh, banks in the US but in particular in Wall Street but to tell you the truth you know it's been used since 100 years actually actuaries have been using 
uh, statistical modeling in finance and insurance pricing for uh, over uh, 100 years now. Uh, Louis Bachelorat is one mathematician, a French mathematician, who first wrote uh, the financial econometrics paper uh, over 100 years back. In the current time, there are some of these quantity investment companies, Citadel is one, Renisa Technology is one. There are many other quantity investment companies that are making use of these uh, modeling techniques to take advantage of the, the gamut of data available these days and making uh, yeah, lots of money on that. But it's nothing guaranteed, frankly speaking, because there were uh, some quantity investment company uh, started by like top class econo financial econometrics uh, researcher, uh, in fact, Nobel Prize winner. One example is LTCM. It was a quantitative uh, investment company that uh, used to use financial econometrics for investment. It was started by uh, Nobel Prize winners in economics who are really, really good at uh, financial mathematics or uh, financial econometrics, but it didn't succeed. It succeeded for quite a few years, like four or five years, and then the profit plummeted and it went into bankruptcy. Uh, yeah, almost, I think it was served by some of the banks, but it almost went into bankruptcy. Then you're also heavily used in HFT, right? High frequency trading these days. All right. Um, bit about how it's uh, related to machine learning and AI. Now, people coming from uh, those backgrounds uh, often get confused about, okay, then what is econometrics and how is it different from machine learning AI? Because, you know, that's more of, uh, that's more commonly used these days, but econometrics is less, right, less uh, popular these days compared to machine learning AI. How is this different? Well, there is no question about that. There is a lots of, uh, there's a lots of relationship, there's a very good relationship between econometrics and AI. In fact, AI, uh, when it was started like in the 1960s, a lot of these econometricians actually were working on the AI or the initial uh, phase of the AI revolution in the world. And there's still many of them still working on the AI research. Uh, there is one sm very small difference, and there are obviously a lot of difference, but one big one difference between econometrics and AI is that where AI is very, very focused on prediction, econometrics is, uh, yeah, is more focused on finding relationship between variables, right? Where your AI machine learning are more about prediction, right? You don't have to understand the relationship between your variables, but we only care about uh, the, the accuracy of prediction. So AI is incredibly useful for predicting financial data. Therefore, you use lots of uh, AI techniques these days. LTCM being uh, yeah, one uh, ML technique being used in the forecasting of financial uh, time series data these days. Um, however, it is less useful to explain relationship. And in the field of finance, you need to be able to explain the relationship between different variables. Uh, one example could be, you know, to find out the relationship between inflation and interest rate. Right, um, so that kind of uh, problem you cannot solve through AI because you need to understand the the nitty gritty of it. The very, uh, I mean, how you get to the final outcome, right? And that's very difficult in AI related uh, algorithms. Econometrics uh, is very useful there, but both complement each other, right? If you are a data scientist specializing in ML and AI, you can. Uh, find financial econometrics or econometrics in general very useful, especially understanding uh, the relationship between different factors. Okay, some of the tools that you can use in financial econometrics, Python, MATLAB, C++, EVU. Uh, these are open source, EVU is not, but it's used in more, uh, used in academia. But nowadays you have a lot of OIL, not MATLAB. MATLAB is obviously again proprietary. Well, R is also very useful, so you can also use R. So these are some of the tools you can use for financial econometrics research. Career prospects. So, if you study financial econometrics, you can find employment in banks, uh, be it in the pricing team, in model validation team, in risk management, risk modeling team, uh, credit risk modeling, market risk modeling, operational risk modeling, asset liability management modeling. So. In lots of these departments, you can find opportunities. Insurance companies, 
again in all areas like credit risk or market risk these risk areas but apart from that they have really large team for pricing analytics right and that's where they use financial econometrics heavily quite heavily so you can also you know find employment there NBFIs are uh, not banks, but they're also, uh, yeah, they deal with uh, a lot of money. So they also do a lot of uh, risk related research, but they also do non banking financial research. So there also you can find employment. Pension fund, quantitative hedge fund. It's very difficult to get into quantitative hedge fund, but you have a PhD in math, physics, and you live in UK or some yeah, Western European countries or in the US, you you can indeed get a uh, get a job in quantitative hedge funds because you don't have quantitative hedge funds uh, in many parts of the world. But if you have access to these, you know, large financial centers, you can certainly find jobs there. They use a lot of financial econometrics. Trading companies, uh, as goes without saying, they use financial econometrics for the, their day-to-day -day, uh, yeah, trading activities. And then macroeconomic research. Um, you know, people coming from economics background or statistics background can find employment uh, in these companies. Some of the uh, famous ones are Oxford Economics. There are also many other uh, yeah, economic research companies or, you know, such. Uh, there are many research companies in London, in New York, Singapore, uh, these places. And then rating agency, whether it's Standard & Poor, Moody's, they use also a lot of financial economic uh, techniques in, the, in their day-to-day -day work. So these are some of the career prospects and if you have further questions please uh, write to us you can find our email id in the description section thank you so much